Are you the type of golfer that likes to adjust settings with your driver? Well, the new Mizuno STG220 is the most adjustable driver out on the market. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell and Danny Farrell. We're both master club fitters at the Second Swing Minnetonka location. And we have finally got our hands on the Mizuno STG220 mm -hmm. and we're gonna play around with the adjustable options today. There's a lot to go over, a lot of ground to cover. You know, looking at just the head itself, two at least in this head for swing weight pur purposes, 11 gram weights, so two of them, so 22 total. That's kind of the, the heaviest industry standard, okay? And also we have a lot of different setting options. So talk to me about the settings that we can change there. Right, so let's first talk about the loft adjustments yep. or the, the lie angle and face angle adjustments. Yeah. Mizuno, just like other manufacturers, you can adjust the sleeve around to different settings. You can go for nine degree head, you can go from seven to 11 degrees aloft. Okay. We all know what that does to the face angle. When you go down to seven, what you're doing is you open up the face angle a little bit. Mm -hmm. When you go to 11, you're closing the face angle. True. So that's just face angle loft adjustments. Okay. Then we have the back of this club. Now we've got some, some options. It's busy. Yep. It's very busy. So there is three different ports where you can slide the, the weights into. Okay. We have where it says high, so essentially high spin or high MOI. Okay. You can put the weights all the way in the back. Okay. It's gonna cause the ball to fly a little higher and probably spin a little bit more. Sure. Uh, draw bias. There's golfers out there that slice the ball. Slam the, the weights, one in the back, one in the heel, or even both in the heel. Mm -hmm. You got a full on draw bias driver. Sure. At the other end of the spectrum, fade bias, same thing. You can put both weights out on the toe, you can put one weight in the toe, one weight in the back here, okay. and you can make it a little more fade bias as well. Interesting, interesting. So I'm glad they changed the cosmetics as well. You know, looking down at the top line, Mizuno for years had kind of that blue shade to it, so they've been transitioning out of that. This one looks really good, Thomas. Yeah, it's a nice, clean, black finish. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit shiny, but it's very, very clean looking down at. Nice, I mean, it's, it's a nice rounded club head, and I think it's gonna inspire confidence, but it's definitely a, a driver that players like, will like to look down at. Absolutely, and it's one of the cheaper options for 2022 as well. It's listed at that 499 price point wise, and they also get a, a benefit of the, the shaft options that Mizuno offers as well at, at no upcharge which is a huge win for a lot of players. Right, yeah, Mizuno has been slowly stepping up their game with the driver in the fairy woods. Right. I'm excited to test this, play around with the adjustable options and okay. see what you fit me into. Sure, so we're, we'll start out with just the stock. Let's have some fun after that. Nine degrees. Yep. Weights just up front. Yep, kind of the most, most standard settings we can make it right now. Well, that's pretty good. So, look pretty good out of the gates, numbers wise. We'll get into that, but talk to me about feel, aesthetics, sound. Talk to me about that stuff with this. It's not the loudest driver that oh. I've that I've heard. I know we're oh. inside, so it's going to seem a little loud, but yeah. softer feel off the face. Okay. Um, very low spinning is what yeah. I noticed. Definitely low spinning. Now, a lot of that's to do with my attack angle, pretty far sure. up. Sure. Um, but I was, I was surprised 1600 RPMs of spin is pretty low. It is, it is, but it was consistent too. So even though some of those, you know, you'll see our smash factor, not the peak of the ceiling at 1.5, but still the consistency in spin rates was incredible. I mean, less than 100 RPMs different, and carry was 290 to 316. So it was overall really, really good just to start out with. But I want to bring up kind of where we are striking on the head too. We know with you and I being inside and up, our miss is going to be more high toe more than anything. So the reason why I brought that up is because I'm going to tinker with the settings a little bit to try and move that strike location for you, okay? So let's take a peek at that and move that over. All right. Well, this sits different at setup. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> it's like toe down.
Pretty good there. I don't need to see another one with that. <laughs> no. what, what did you do, Danny? Well, you brought up it, it looks a little bit different. So the benefit of the 220 driver is I can change lie angle without changing loft. So what I did was just bring it one degree toe up or upright yep. at the same loft. Yeah, I mean, when I first put the club head down, it looked to me, yeah, like that toe was a little bit, little bit higher up. Yeah. It yep. actually looked like it was a little more closed. Mm -hmm. at, at address. Which it should, right? Yeah. Same idea as irons as well. So, right. but overall, I mean, numbers were pretty stagnant, pretty similar, nothing really to worry about there. But the biggest influence was on direction, right? So now we can, we didn't even touch weights at all. This is still neutral weight, heel and toe. All I did was just change it one degree upright. And it already had that kind of influence to it. So a lot of different results going on here. Let's take a peek if that strike location moved at all. So where we started? No. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Still got some tinkering to do. Right, but it was it was closer. It's just I'm not used to that, that line. Yeah. 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 All Let's right. Give me another setting. All right. Let's tinker it up again. Tinker so up I'm again. not playing with the weights yet. Okay. Once we find a setting that optimizes ball speed that we'll play around with that other part and really dial it in. Yeah. But pretty crazy how you can see one degree of difference with a driver head this big, right? Just visually. Down two. You are correct, Mr. Campbell. Can't hide anything from you. I can see that as well here. This is, this is where I get excited to uh, like you said, get a little little spicy, <laughs> maybe tee it up, go after a little bit more, continue to hit up on it. If that spin rate stays down and I pick up a little bull speed, the bull should go further. Absolutely. Oh boy, there's some bull speed. Yow. Now we're talking. Yep, now we're talking there. I miss it, that one. Yep, that's what that felt like. Okay. All right, so take a look at that in front of you. That's just through changing settings on the driver. White was just stock manufacturer settings. Then we got to playing a little bit. Showed how it went, it can go one degree upright, can go max of three as well. So that's just a little taste of that that's influencing hard left. Then I open the face by dropping it two degrees of loft, and now it's showing the right. So now we're gonna figure out a combination with both of those and start hitting more fairways, send it a little bit farther. Right. Okay. I did like the fact that I was able to get a little more bowl speed mm -hmm. at the, the minus two setting. Yeah. Um, I did like that. Um, it was a little harder to control, I'm not gonna lie. I was having a little hard time with the right bowl and if yeah. you've followed me the last couple of years, I've transitioned from hitting a fade to drawing the ball, and I yeah. would prefer to hit a straighter ball or slight draw as opposed to yeah. something that goes right, because I Absolutely. hate that shot. Yeah. Absolutely, and with your driver now, Thomas, you have it set up in the, the draw position too, right, with yep. Callaway? Yep, I have so. nine degrees at, in the draw setting. Okay, yep. okay. It's funny, because that's where I'm going next with this too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, that felt like it was a little bit more user on that shot, just Kay. by the ball stage, just a little to the right. Okay. Face angle is two degrees open. High center. Okay. Yeah. That felt good. There's that patented draw we like to see. Good. Well, my face to path was 0, 0.0. That yeah, helps. Solid. Talk to me about this kind of setup. Has there been a blend so far where you felt more confident visually and off the face as well? I mean, this, this is as close as to what I'm used to seeing it address. Mm -hmm. um, just the way it, it sits at address with regards to the lion goal. Okay. I know there's still a little bit less loft than I'm used to playing. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes when you're chasing bowl speed, your ego can kind of get in the way a, a little bit, but yeah. uh, it looks 
more similar to what I'm used to at address. Okay. Is okay. what I'd see. And the ball was flying a little bit straighter. That last swing was a really good swing. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're getting a little bit better through our settings here as well. You know, that one degree upright at the same loft moved it a little bit. So we opened the face up. We got a little bit more towards the toe, a little bit higher strike as well. Now we're kind of in six and 12, which nothing, nothing wrong with that. It's just got to promote a little bit lower spin, which when we're taking advantage of your high launch, that's perfectly right. fine by us. So yep. I don't mind that one bit. But again, we haven't touched weight at all yet. Okay. So what do you um, want to do here? I want to keep the last setting in there because it looks the most comfortable and the numbers spoke and said the exact same thing. Now let's move kind of the weights from heel and toe side. Let's double them up on the toe. Okay. Ugh. Hmm. Better. All right. I like that. Okay. So the first time we adjusted both of those 11 gram weights. So now we've got 22 grams hanging out there on the toe. <laughs> There's a lot of weight out there right. for sure. Talk to me about that. What came out? Well, I can't really like feel it at, a, at address. One thing I did notice is the bull didn't go left. Right. Uh, it was actually pretty consistent. It was just a little bit right of center. Yeah. Which is, if you're the type, the type of golfer that struggles with that left bull and you just want to keep that bull in the air a little bit longer, mm -hmm. it's a good option. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's important. You know, in our fitting process, we tune in head setting and then we'll fine tune it with the weight adjustment if there is on the driver that works best for that player but with this there's a plethora of setting changes upright lie angles face angle control um, weights 11 grams in the heel 11 in the toe 11 in the rear and we haven't even talked shaft yet so there right. is a lot going on with mizuno um, but Speaking of golf shafts, probably not the, the best fit for me here today. No. Um, now, that's a whole other part of the process is again fit for the, for the right golf shaft Correct. as well. Yep. But uh, right now, we're just focusing with the sa exact same golf shaft, trying these different setting options. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to touch briefly on, on shafts. They do include a lot of the aftermarket options or what would be aftermarket for other manufacturers. That's included in their pricing at $499 from Mizuno. So it does open up that door to experience some other shafts that might be out of a player's price range. But you know, in terms of our testing today, probably not the right shaft you know, to go into there for you. We'll have to do more testing on that. Yep. But I'm really impressed with the overall sound of that driver, especially from back here. It's muted. You can tell there's got some carbon on there, which helps mute the sound a little bit. But it's got, you know, even the heel or toe strikes when we miss it, it d we don't really pick up on that anymore. I don't know if that's good or bad. Some players might want that feedback sound-wise if yep. they miss it. But overall, very, very stable, very adjustable driver based on just settings alone. I think this is going to be a hit in 2022. Right. I, I, I definitely agree. And for me, you know, we wouldn't fit me into the heel or putting it back, essentially. I don't no. need that even any more stability by putting the weight further back. No. We, we can do it to, to show what would happen but it's just, I don't need to hit the ball left. Correct. And that's why I wouldn't touch this side here. Right, right. Now, I touched touch that area by going a little more upright with my driver, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to slam weight in the heel. Right. Or in the back, because no. I don't need that extra stability. Right, but for a player that is seeing a lot of the right side of the golf course out there, being able to tune the, the driver up three degrees upright and then throw 22 degree 22 grams in the heel, holy smokes, we've got a draw manufacturer right now. Right. So that could yep. be very useful for a lot of players, but it could be dangerous for tweaking after every single round as yeah. well. It's going to be very useful for a lot of players, especially going to this part of the golf club. Mm -hmm. uh, this face, a lot, most golfers, if they're going to miss it, they miss it to the right. Yeah. So by putting the weight in the heel or, or back is right. going to be something that can be done by a club fitter. Yep. But I would say, as you mentioned, we talk about tinker. Don't tinker too much because no. it's, you know, stick where you're at. And obviously, if you're having 
real big issues, come back and see us or work with a PGA instructor to see what's going on really. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So overall, really, really good test here, Thomas. I mean, we showcased the little adjustability through the, the hosel settings. The next step forward would be the, the weight adjustments that really dial that in for a player. And third would be ultimately shafts. But with what we've been testing today, really, really good and constant results. I think this is a great hit from Mizuno. Definitely a step forward in their driver game. So, I would agree. I think uh, Mizuno is just slowly catching up with other manufacturers, which is, which is fun to see because yeah. it's nice to have competition. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Thomas, we are changing up the whole spec of this driver, which we have the ability to, but now we're making it a fully loaded left head. Okay, we put 22 grams of weight in the heel. Also adjusted the, the face angle by adjusting the loft. So I came up two degrees, so it might look a little bit closed, but this should be really effective at seeing the left side of the golf course. Right. I, I will say at address, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's pointing that way, but perfect. Uh, see what happens. Okay. Hey, oh. It's amazing how much easier it is to draw the ball here compared to the setting you had on before. Yeah. I mean, I, I had 22 out, out on the toe. Right. Now I've got 22 in the heel. Yeah. But not even just that, just the, the adjustments in just the, the, the lie and the loft setting sure. as well, face sure. angle settings. There you go. Okay. Pretty good swing, really. Yeah. It's just, you know, what happens when we've got all that weight in the heel and we miss toe side, yeah. we've got no mass to maintain that ball speed then. Right. right? Yeah, that dropped down a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Love it. I don't. <laughs> I love that. I do not like that shot one just, bit. Just thinking as a fitter this year, seeing that much left, you know, being able to do that, that's a huge <laughs> win for a lot of players. My job's going to be easier. Thank you, Mizuno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a, as, a, as a golfer not liking to see a snap hook. I know it. I it's, know it. Uh, <laughs> it's not pretty, but yeah, if you've got a golfer where their paths across yep. and their face angle is, is wide open, opposite to what I've got going here, yes. it's, yeah. uh, it's a winner for sure. Now, this is the easiest drawer machine you'll ever hit. And that's just having a driver that's adjustable because you're not completely tied to it. You can adjust back if you're making swing changes. Mm -hmm. so it's a great option. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. For the price point, you know, a little bit lower than other top manufacturers as well. With aftermarket shafts that players can go into, it's a win-win for a lot of players. I just think they'll have to kind of get past at being a Mizuno. But with the upgraded aesthetics, you can't really tell what it is until you flip it up and look at it. So really, really good work here from Mizuno. Really good. I agree. So we haven't shown all the settings. We've shown a decent amount, mm -hmm. but there are many more adjustments that you can do with Mizuno. Yes. So if you're interested in playing around with a Mizuno driver and seeing what adjustable settings you need to get in your game, mm -hmm. coming into our stores and, and get fit with us. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you can, send us a comment and let us know what setting you have your driver set at.